I was to talk to my 26 year old self, I would tell that kid that you don't have time. And you really, you don't know when it's gonna end. And so get out there and do the things you wanna do. Get out there and get after them now. Don't wait another second. Take advantage of it. Get out there and live. I always wanted to be a commando ever since I was a little kid. I heard that the SEALs were really tough and that the training was really tough. And then, you know, once you get in, everyone makes a big deal out of buds that's, in the SEAL teams, it's no big deal. Everyone goes through it. It's, you get cold, you get wet, whatever. Um, you do a bunch of push-ups and pull-ups and dips, but it's not, it's anyone that gets to the SEAL teams and does deployments overseas and has a real career, they're not talking about buds training. Okay. <laughs> it, just mean, it just doesn't mean anything. I wasn't a great athlete, you know. I was, you know, you got kids in there that played, that ran college track or swam in college, and anybody that ran college track or college cross country is going to breeze through every run. Anybody that swam is going to have no problem with the swimming. But you know, there's, there's, it, it, it finds people's weaknesses. And so I was like a gray man that was just in the middle of everything. I was, I was in the middle of the pack on the runs, I was in the middle of the pack on the swims, I was in the middle of the pack on the obstacle courses. I was just in the middle of the pack. I mean, some guys just were really good athletes and they excelled in everything. Uh, but some guys excelled in one area. They were incredible runners, but they couldn't swim and they, they wouldn't make it. I had a guy that was, you know, a NCAA water polo team captain champion, and he quit. And I had a guy that was an Olympic alternate gymnast and he quit so th those are two guys that are way better athletes than i would ever be but they quit just because someone's a good physical athlete it doesn't mean that they're a good seal because being a good seal is a lot more than just being a good athlete being a, being a good athlete is like the baseline and it's everything that you learn to do after that and what makes a good seal a guy that's a good leader, a guy that's tactically sound, a guy that makes good decisions, a guy that's good under pressure, a guy that doesn't ever give up on trying to accomplish a mission. So those are the things that make a good SEAL. Not just being able to run fast. You're constantly growing in the SEAL teams. Every time you go through a workup, which is our training cycle, you're getting better, you're getting more efficient, you're getting more confident with what you're doing. So you're always learning and growing. And, and I was always learning until the day I retired because it's not a, it's not a, a, a boom, this happened and everything changed. It's, it's a constant addition of skill set and repetition of situations where you become competent at your job. The fear of getting shot or killed is not on your mind when you're in the moment. You know, it'll build up when you're waiting to go out. You know, there's times you're waiting to go out and you're like, think to yourself, okay, there's a lot of bad things going on out there and some of them have happened to me. But I think at some point you, you realize that there's nothing you can do about that. I mean, other than just quit and, and just resign yourself to a life of cowardice. But if you opt to not do that and you step up and say, okay, I'm ready. And if I die, I die. And once you overcome that, then nothing else to be afraid of. There's no one that wishes for peace more than people that have been to war. Because when the war drums sound, it's my friends that are going to fight. That's, that's who's going to fight. It's my friends that are going to, to put their lives on the line. So when the, when the war drums sound, the people that have been to war are the ones that actually say, let's think about this first. Because like I said before, and like everyone says all the time, and they say it like it's no big deal, but war is hell. When you take an 18-year-old kid, and you're gonna go put him in a situation where he's gonna have to kill people and possibly get wounded or possibly get killed himself, that's a traumatic experience. And so before you do that, you should think about why you're doing it and understand if, if the people have the will to fight. And the will to fight, as I've said many times before, the will to fight is the will to kill and it's the will to die. And those are some pretty big wills that you need to have. The welcome to Ramadi is, you know, you're gonna go 
and pay your respects to some guys that were just killed. And, and there's firefights in the city. There's firefights in the city all day. There's firefights in the city all night. How, how do you lead your men through that when you know they're dealing with not only the funerals, which definitely take a psychological toll, but then even that just constant firefighting over there? I mean, do you have to switch up your gear and think, okay, I got to lead stronger or maybe a little easier in certain scenarios? Are you changing? Yes, a bit? you do have to modulate your, your leadership. And you have to do that if you're in the business world. You have to do that if you're leading any kind of team. You've got to modulate and you've got to recognize when your guys need to be pushed and when your guys need to be not pushed and given a rest. So you're constantly doing that, regardless of what kind of team you're leading. And in combat, like, you know, I say all the time, it's amplified. Because if you push your guys too hard in combat, they're gonna break. You know, whereas in business, oh, maybe they make errors on something or maybe they do snap. I mean, it does happen in the business world where people like can't take it anymore. But in combat, it'll happen very quickly. And, and so, you know, you do, you're constantly modulating and, and taking measure of where your guys are at. And, you know, sometimes I didn't do a great job of that. Sometimes I went a little far and said, ooh, Wow, I just saw the look on that guy's face. He, he's, he needs a rest. And I should have recognized that earlier. And, you know, you make mistakes, no doubt. Ordering people to do things does not work. You actually have to lead them. And that's another buzzword out there is this, is accountability. You know, you gotta be accountable. You gotta be, you gotta hold your people accountable. And to me, Accountability is a tool, it's a, it's, a, it's a tool of leadership, but it's not the primary tool of leadership. It's actually a crutch. It's actually a tool to use when you don't pull off leadership correctly. I didn't hold my guys accountable. I didn't you know, walk down the line and inspect what they were doing and no, I didn't have to hold them accountable. They wanted to do the right thing. They wanted to do what was aligned with the mission. And that's what leadership is. It's not about accountability. It's about leading and getting them to lead themselves and getting them to take ownership of things. When something goes wrong, I freeze up. I freeze up. I get stagnant. I don't want to move. I just ask myself, why me? Any advice? You ask yourself, why me? If you're having problems, sure say good that's perfect but then don't ask yourself why me instead ask yourself now what am I going to do about it what are you going to do about it? ask yourself that question and then figure it out figure out what you're going to do say to yourself I am going to detach I am going to assess the situation I am going to come up with a plan and I am going to execute and then start moving it's it's not gonna be a perfect plan but take action action that moved you in a positive direction and if it ends up being the wrong direction that's fine at least you've learned where not to go now where this gets tough is if it is something that seems like it's completely out of your control and you know what some things are completely out of your control and that's fine and when that happens you ask yourself what can I control what can I control that will make this situation a little bit better the world is not like the movies the movies aren't real they, they don't exist but you do and life this life is it's better than any movie there is movies are supposed to provoke emotion they're supposed to make you feel something but I have a better idea go out into the world and actually feel it go feel joy and love and triumph and rapture and ecstasy and glory go feel those things and you know with those feelings there will be other feelings as well there'll be sorrow and pain and sadness and desolation and 
suffering. There'll be all those feelings too, but you know what? That's okay. Take both sides. Feel all of it. That's what life is. Those feelings, those emotions, those highs, and those lows. Those are life. And those emotions and those feelings are better than any movie because they are real. Make your life your own movie. Be- actually, make it better than a movie. Not, not better because it's more adventurous or more romantic or more melodramatic. Make it better because it's real. It's real, so it is better. And you know what? Real comes with some downsides. Real comes with some darkness. But that's okay. It's okay because when you know the darkness, the light becomes even brighter. So go out there. Move toward the light. The guys that that want to be like Jocko one day you know what do you tell that that 20 year old that sees this thing and says I want to go do that well first of all don't try and be like me be better than me crush me make me look like a baby that's what you that's what you do and and don't don't talk about it don't mull it over don't plan for it just get after it you get after it make it happen use your force of will to make it happen as a human being the strongest thing you've got is your force of will so take that force of will and make that happen